Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you how we can calculate our net worth. Now I know what you're thinking, every time we hear the term net worth, it's usually in reference to someone who's either rich or famous or both. But it really shouldn't be restricted to that. Knowing our own personal wealth is a really vital tool in our personal finance journey. It helps us understand where we are today, but it also helps us understand how we can get to where we want to be in the future. Now to calculate our net worth is actually really simple. We have to understand how much we own or what is typically known as assets minus anything that we owe or what is typically known as liabilities. Now, as always, I have a really simple spreadsheet that I want to share with you, and this helps us calculate what the net worth is, but also helps us track it over time as well. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Before we go into the spreadsheet, let's go over a quick 101 on what the net worth is actually made up of. Now, I've already mentioned that it is your assets minus your liabilities or what you own minus what you owe. So let's understand a few examples of a few assets that we are likely to have. So the most common examples of an asset is the cash that is in your savings and current account, the value of your investments and your pensions, and the market value of your property and or your car. Now you would have noticed that for the majority of these assets, I use the word value to describe them. And this simply means if I were to sell the asset today, how much am I likely to get from it from the market? Now obviously the value of that asset is highly dependent on how the market is behaving at that point in time. So for example, if I were to sell my house during a housing boom, I'm likely to get much more value from my property. Equally, if I'm trying to sell it during a housing crash, I'm likely to get a lot less money for my property. Now moving on to the other side where we look at the common liabilities that an individual is likely to have. And this can range from things like how much credit card debt you have, the outstanding value of your mortgage, and any other personal loans as well. So this can include things such as like financing on a car, financing on a new kitchen perhaps, or even just loans from friends or family as well. Now for those of us in the UK, you can elect to put student finance in this liability liabilities bucket as well. However, my suggestion is to not. And that is because I see student finance more of an additional tax on our income rather than a debt. Now I've explained this more in my previous video when I talk about student finance in more depth, but essentially the amount of money you owe back to the government in student finance loans is really dependent on how much your income is. And if you earn below a certain income, you may not even have to pay anything back at all. That's why I see it more as a tax on your income rather than a personal debt. But feel free to add it in if you choose. Now that that's understood, let's move on to the spreadsheet. Now you can immediately see that we've split the spreadsheet into three sections. We've got your assets here, your liabilities here, and then your net worth is calculated below. Now for assets and liabilities, I have listed a few examples just to get you started, but feel free to add a few more or less depending on your personal circumstance. And on the right hand side, we've got our date column, and this is how we're gonna be tracking our net worth over time. So I'm gonna start off by putting today's date, which is the 21st of November, 2020. And to fill this out, I'm just gonna be taking a simple example from your average Joanne. Now Joanne, she is age 25 with an annual salary before tax of 30,000 pounds and she has a current account of 1,500, savings account of 3,000. She's invested in a stocks and shares ISA, which was worth currently at 5,000 pounds. She's invested well in her workplace pension and it's currently valued at 10,000 pounds. And she has a house and it's currently marketed at the value of 250,000 pounds. So let's figure out how to put this into our spreadsheet. Okay, so the first example we've got down is the money in your bank accounts. And this is obviously going to be the total of her current and savings account. So that is going to be 4,500. That's the saving plus the current account. The market value of the property, we know this, is currently valued at 250,000 pounds. The market value of your car, um, it's not stated here, so let's assume that she doesn't actually have a car, so we can actually delete this um, and then shift everything up. Obviously, this is all personalized. I've just listed a few examples, so please feel free to change this depending on what your personal circumstances are. The next example we've written down is the value of stocks and shares. Um, so we've got this down as 5,000 pounds that in there now. Uh, next item is value of lifetime ISA. Again, it doesn't look like she has one, so we can go ahead and delete this, but I'm just gonna keep it in here for a second, just because I want to demonstrate something a little bit later on. So I'll just leave that blank. 
uh, and then value of pensions we've got this as well and that's ten thousand pounds now the last example are personal items and these can be examples where we can sell personal items of ours at a really high value this can be such things as like jewelry gold etc etc um, again she doesn't have this so I'm just gonna put leave that blank for now or just put a zero even now we can see at the bottom of this table that her total asset is just under two hundred seventy thousand pounds now you would have noticed that I've also added another row called total liquid asset value now this isn't actually necessary when it comes to calculating our net worth but I've added it in anyway because I do think it is really useful for us to understand that out of all of our assets how much of it is liquid so a liquid asset is when we can convert our asset immediately or close to immediately into cash equally if an asset is illiquid that means it will take us a really long time to sell off the asset and convert into cash I've also used the term illiquid on any asset where there are restrictions for us to get access Access to the money as well so let's go through all these assets one by one and I'm going to break down whether or not these assets are illiquid or liquid or not so the first example being the money in your bank account and yes this is a liquid asset and that is because you can pretty much immediately go to your ATM and pull out cash and there you go you have the cash there already so I'm going to put there yes as a liquid and you can see it's turned blue and then now it's calculated here below 4,500 is a liquid asset the market value of property, this is not a liquid asset and that's because selling a property takes a bloody long time. So converting that into cash takes a really long time. So I'm gonna put that no. Value of stocks and shares, I'm gonna put this yes, it is a liquid asset and that is because it only takes a few working days for the provider to sell off your stocks and shares and convert it into cash back to you. Value of lifetime ISA, so the reason why I wanted to show this because this is an example where Lifetime ISA, if you held it as cash, we can argue it is a liquid asset. However, there are restrictions on how we can get access to the lifetime ISA. You either have to buy your first house or you have to reach the age of 60. So if Joanne did have a lifetime ISA, I would have called this an illiquid asset because we don't have access to the funds in this account immediately. And the same goes for pensions. Although pensions are invested in the stocks and shares market, and again, it takes a few working days for you to sell off that asset and convert it into cash. However, Joanne can only access her pension funds once she's reached that retirement age, which currently is at 55, she's age 30. So again, I'm gonna put this as illiquid because we don't have the immediate access to the funds. Personal items is really debatable. Um, we can put it as yes or no, it really depends on what personal item you're trying to sell. Things like gold, it's pretty easy to sell to a uh, to a pawn shop, for example, or a gold trade dealer. So I'm gonna put this as yes from this example, but she doesn't have any, so we don't have to worry about this. And I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. So now when we look at the total of liquid assets, it's now saying 9,500, and that is the total of her bank account plus her stocks and shares ISA. That way she knows that if she needs money, she has access to 9,500 pounds of it immediately because the other ones are tied up in illiquid assets. So now we move on to liabilities. Again, I've listed a few examples here, but feel free to change um, and play around with it as you wish. For credit card, um, she stated that she's got 1,000 pounds in credit card debt, so we'll just add that in there. Uh, mortgage value, so she still has 200,000 pounds left to pay back the bank. So make sure I add the right amount of zeros. Uh, the car loan, uh, again, she doesn't actually have a car, so yeah, we can delete that um, and move that up there. So now moving on to personal loans. Um, so I've put brackets here, not student finance, and that's because I share the opinion that student finance really isn't a debt, it's more of a tax. But feel free to add student finance into this bucket as well, or you can add it into another list. Um, so Joanne does have one personal loan. She's recently renovated her kitchen and she's taken a loan for that, and that comes to the value of 5,000 pounds. So we'll add that in there now. Cool, and then that's all of her liabilities. So that totals up to 206,000 pounds. And now, as you can see, her total net worth is calculated below automatically for us. And this comes to a good value of 63,000 pounds. 500 pounds and that's in the green which is really really good and obviously with the spreadsheet it doesn't stop here we want to be coming back to our asset and liabilities every so often so let's just say uh, Joanne comes back on the three months time which comes to uh, February of uh, 2021 gosh almost the new year um, so that's already done um, I'm just gonna do 
a quick copy and paste example, maybe just add a few more bits here. So now her total asset for this month has gone up by 271,000 pounds and her liquid assets has also gone up. So now she has immediate access to 10,500 pounds. And again, the liquid assets don't really matter when it comes to calculating your net worth, but it's really useful information that I think is worth knowing and I've put it in here for the sake of it. So now her liabilities again have decreased. Um, so she only owes 205,000 pounds 200. And that brings her net worth to 65,800 pounds, which you can see is an increase of 2,300 pounds from the previous month, which is an increase of 3.62%. So that is how we calculate our net worth. As you can see from this spreadsheet, it's really simple to do. We just simply add in a few numbers of what our assets are and what our liabilities are, and it simply calculates the net worth for you. And for those that are taking personal finance seriously, it is really important that we understand what our net worth is, because it gives you a really good indication of where we are currently and where we can go in the future. And it can also be used to highlight any glaring points as well. So for example, taking Joanne's example, if her credit card debt automatically shot up to 10,000 pounds, yes, she's still in the green and net worth but she's lost six thousand pounds in her net worth really we should be seeing a growing trend over time obviously this can be a blip but we can immediately see using the spreadsheet why this has happened and hopefully by having that highlighted to you the fact that you are spending more on your credit card we can change the behavior that we are having with our money and move it to a position where we are now getting an upward trend on our net worth although it's perfectly acceptable to have a few blips here and there because there are going to be some occasions where we do have to spend a lot of money compared to other months use the spreadsheet to understand why that's happening and then from that and you can take necessary action to fix that for the future what I also wanted to do was just to give you an indication of how much your net worth should be given a certain age now this obviously depends on so many variables and I've been searching all over the internet to find a really coherent way to do this and unfortunately every Tom Dick and Harry has a different way of measuring by what age you should have your net worth by so I've taken an example of what I thought was the most reasonable one and this gauge is worked out by if you are 30 or under you should be looking at trying to build your net worth to at least half of your annual salary um, once you hit 40 you should be looking at doubling it and then when it's 50 plus you should be looking at getting four times or even more than your annual salary um, I've done a simple formula here in the spreadsheet if you just navigate to the what should I aim for tab you add your age and your annual salary and it will tell you what your ideal net worth is again this is a gauge you're gonna get so many variations and opinions online but this is what I thought was kind of reasonable so I would encourage you not to take this number as gospel I think you really need to be focusing on making sure that your net worth is on a steady steady upward trend over time. That way, I do believe you're gonna be absolutely fine. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. I'll be putting a link to this spreadsheet in the description box down below. Let me know what your thoughts are and how you have best managed your net worth. I would really appreciate if you smash that like button as well. That does wonders for the growth of my channel. And I release a video every single Monday. So if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Bye.